two days in the Badlands? Are you kidding me? This place is unbelievable. I can't wait. Let's go. With 244,000 acres of beautiful landscapes, striking geological formations, and its plentiful wildlife, the Badlands National Park is home to some of the most abundant fossils on Earth, dating as far back between 75 and 28 million years ago. The Badlands were formed through deposition and erosion starting about 500,000 years ago and geologists estimate that in the next 500,000 years, the Badlands will erode completely. Its formation is due to multitudes of sedimentary rock depositing as environmental changes occurred going from sea to subtropical forest and to open savanna during a 50 million year period. Out of all the places to have to fix a tire. A highly noticeable characteristic of these geological formations are their multicolored layers. They represent all the different periods in geological time and the rock types deposited during them. The Badlands contain sandstone, mudstone, claystone, siltstone, limestone, volcanic ash, and shell. The oldest layers are found at the very bottom and are from the Pierre Shell period dating back 75 to 69 million years ago. Back then there was a shallow inland sea which stretched out from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean. Even though dinosaurs were around during this period, they were not present because dinosaurs can't swim. Fossilized creatures found in these layers include cephalopods, baculites, and a giant marine reptile measuring over 50 feet named Mosasaur. The next layer above the Pierre shell is the Yellow Mount, and it was formed after the inland sea drained into the Arctic Ocean leaving ancient fossilized soils preserved in between layers of rock. Their yellow mustard coloration is due to a mineral called gothite. Above the Yellow Mounds period is the Shadran Formation dating back 37 to 34 million years ago. It consisted of light gray claystone beds in hot wet weather similar to the Everglades National Park. The creatures present during this period include ancient alligators and the extinct Brontother. What a day I'm having. There is just no way to get through this place just pedaling away. You have to stop every turn almost <laughs> it's so beautiful there's so much beauty in here I'm just cruising downwind flying um, along this prairie setting like just gorgeous sun's coming down I'm taking my time I still got 20 miles to go but I want to ride into into sundown and just enjoy it above the Shadran formation is the Brule formation dating back 34 to 30 million years ago this period consisted of cooler, drier climate with open savannas with river channels. There were grazing animals such as oreodonts and predators such as the nimravit, a saber-toothed cat-like animal. Above the Brule Formation are the youngest layers, the Sharps Formation and the Rockford Ash. The Sharps Formation dates back 30 to 28 million years ago. The Rockford Ash is from volcanic eruptions in the Great Basin where Utah and Nevada are today. The name Batlands is not just a geographical term, it is also a geological one that characterizes easily eroding soft sedimentary rocks. There are Batlands formations such as the ones found here in the Batlands National Park in the states of Wyoming, Utah, North Dakota, Colorado and Nebraska. They are also found around the world with some of the most known in Canada, New Zealand, Italy, Spain and Argentina. Wow, what a day. I thought I was gonna do 30 miles. I did more than double that. Or I'm gonna do more than double by the time I'm done. Look at these views. I just climbed up to 3,400 feet, which is more than the Eastern Continental Divide and the most I've climbed ever on a bicycle. 
I know it's not a ton for a lot of people, but for me it's another uh, level. I'll probably be getting in at dark. It's been quite the special day, memorable. Like they all are, but this one most. It's so beautiful. I got about eight miles to the campground and it's a dirt road. As I make my way to the park's Sage Creek campground, I find myself with an oncoming storm and two bison that block my path. With the help of a passing vehicle and later on good-hearted Jimmy, a van lifer who made an extra effort, I got bailed out of two tough situations. Do I... bicycle past those things? I don't think so. I'm like a bicycle and a guy. If I was in a car, but... This is Jimmy. I was like three miles from getting to my campsite here at Sage Creek and he like passed by me. I had met him earlier today after I fixed my flat or yesterday and he's like asking me like what's going on are you okay it's dark I'm like running with my lights I couldn't video any of it and the storm was coming a humongous cell with serious wind and um so I I, I tell him no I'm gonna make it I had three miles to go <laughs> hey, so he, he takes off and then he like runs for a while and I'm like came back for me he's like yo you're not gonna make it <laughs> get in the van he's pretty gnarly out there <laughs> So I took my bike apart, we threw it in, I mean, in a hurry, we were like trying to figure out what to do and we rode down to the campsite here at Sage Creek and just waited it out and, and then like it, it was quite the night, serious wind, anyways. Oh yeah man. Thanks man. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Legit. Yeah, man. <laughs> it is absolutely bonkers windy. I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna put my head down and go into the wind <laughs> for as long as I can and deal with it. Last night I got really lucky. I was in my tent. This thing was shaking all over the place. I'm pretty sure there were gusts into the middle to high 30s. But it held up good. I mean, I'm really, it kind of let me know what my tent can do. Sage Creek and Badlands is covered in prairie dogs. <coughs> this is how close you can get to them. Pretty awesome. The Badlands of South Dakota have been used as hunting grounds by many different tribes of American Indians for as far back as 11,000 years. As of 150 years ago, the Great Sioux Nation, consisting of seven bands including the Oglala Lakota people, displaced all other tribes from the region. I'm climbing up this hill. It's not that steep, but the wind doesn't make it easy. By the late 1800s, the westward expansion in the United States with homesteaders arriving from around the country and the world claiming government offered land, managed to strip American Indians from much of their land. A southern territory of the Badlands National Park, comprised of 2,486 acres, called the South Unit, is part of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. The reservation is the seventh largest with 2.1 million acres. Today, the Oglala Sioux tribe continue to face many hardships in their community. I've only done like a three miles in half an hour. I don't even think I'm doing six miles an hour, but I guess I must have. There's no wind behind this wall here, so I'm gonna just take a break, eat something. South Dakota, it doesn't disappoint. <laughs> I'm gonna miss it. This Sage Creek Road is uh, 
is constant washboards but every once in a while or maybe half the time one of these three lanes or sometimes the fourth lane opens up where it's flat enough that you're not bouncing but I can't go that fast I gotta keep it at a certain speed otherwise I feel like I'm breaking the bike in half I'm 13 miles on this Sage Creek <laughs> road which is challenging I think this might be one of my most challenging uh, days so far the roads full of washboards and you're either switching lanes all the time or you're in the washboards and then like you make a turn through some uh, cornfields and you think the views are gonna be over and you get so surprised this entire area that I'm passing by is there's a sign back there is uh, for protecting the black ferret uh, black footed ferret which likes to eat those uh, prairie dogs. They were uh, endangered in this area badly and they've been in reintroduced and they've made this whole entire area for them to roam around. I'm close to the end of the Sage Creek Road. It's been uh, 16 miles since I left the campground. I just passed this kid and his family and the kid was in the back seat looking out the back window and it made me think like, about me being a kid and being in that situation looking out the window and cool places my parents took me to and I was like I think the whole time I was thinking this is not enough. As I ride out of Sage Creek Road and onto the paved Highway 44 I stopped at the unincorporated community of Scenic where I am told there are only three inhabitants. Here I am presented with more challenges as the only way to Rapid City is riding into a 35 mile per hour wind for over 40 miles and without enough time left in my day. I made it to this town. I guess it's called Scenic, but there's nothing here. It's like an abandoned town. There's only three people living here. and. Um, I had 3% on my phone, so she's gonna let me uh, charge it. She's charging it. I'm charging it up in there right now. She says the only option I have is to go to Rapid City. That's 40 miles into a 30 plus mile an hour wind. Maybe I'm not that great a cyclist, but I mean, I can't hardly push into that. I can take it sideways, but not head on. And it's straight northwest bound, and it's a northwest wind. I don't, she says the only option is that and going south goes into the reservations and they're not letting anybody in. I've already heard about that. They don't let anyone pass by. They have blocks or blockades. She says I could camp in this little town and nobody's going to care and it's super safe and I got enough food. So I got to look at, and there's no service so I don't know what the weather's going to do. If I knew the wind was going to lay down I would do it. And then there's option C which is Hitching a ride to Rapid City, which solves every bit of my problems, including logistics, meeting up with uh, Bill and Jason in Bighorn next weekend on Friday. So this is where I'm stuck. I gotta go that way. There's no way I can go the other way. I think I'm gonna hitchhike. I hate to do it, but extreme circumstances demand extreme action. Do you have enough room for your feet? Yeah, absolutely. My tool kit's behind the seat. So, so this is this is Anna and she's like a van, van lifer. <laughs> and she agreed, I just pulled up to her and I was like, can you take me to Rapid City? And she's like, Almost said no, and then she's like, if you help me move all this stuff around. Anyways, we moved all this stuff around, her front, everything, and put it all in the back, and she's gonna take me the 40 plus miles to Rapid City. I'm gonna show you the van. She's got quite the rig, and she saved my day. <laughs> 